She was the shortest um, reigning British Prime Minister ever. 49 days for Liz Truss, but uh, her book, 10 Days to Save the West, comes out today telling that story. Well, in her book, Truss claims she was the only Conservative in the room as she explores her time in government from Foreign Secretary to, briefly, Prime Minister. Well, last night she spoke with Nigel Farage. Here's what she had to say. I was the only Conservative in the room yeah. for many years, and it's not working. You know, the West is weak. Uh, we're seeing authoritarian regimes on the, on the rise. And what we're also seeing is in our own societies our very values being undermined. You know, the things we believe in, our nation, the family, individual freedom, all of those core values are being undermined. And that is what my book is about. I hate being told what to do. Yeah, I know. And I hate the government telling other people what to do. And having spent 10 years in the government, I can tell you it generally doesn't know best. We've had a white hall that's been shaped by being in Europe, you know, essentially supplicants to Europe. And... It's almost like, what is that syndrome when you become a hostage and you start to love Stockholm. your... Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. It's almost like that. You know, mm. Officials are constantly looking to Brussels for validation. And it, all of that needed to change. Just part of uh, what she had to say. She's got more to say tonight on GB News. Let's go to her political correspondent, Olivia Utley. Olivia, for your take on this. Well, it's very interesting what Liz Truss was saying last night. We often hear uh, politicians in Westminster, particularly conservative politicians, complain about what they call the blob, the sort of civil servants and technocrats who they believe are actually running Britain. Liz Truss almost sort of takes that a step further. She suggests that politicians now have almost no power at all. And I suppose that explains uh, for her the reasons why her premiership wasn't a huge success. She suggests that Britain should get out of the ECHR. Well, that's something that quite a lot of Conservative MPs agree with. But she also thinks we should scrap the uh, Office for Budget responsibility and the Supreme Court as well. She believes that these sort of technocratic institutions, these uh, non-government, non-political uh, non institutions, are actually what's running the country. And I expect there will be quite a lot of sympathy for that position within the Conservative Party. Liz Truss knows that. She's trying to get some support on side. Lots of people in the Conservative Party essentially think that whoever the next Prime Minister is, his or her hands will be tied because of these institutions which New Labour gave so much power to. It'll be really interesting to see if Rishi Sunak responds to any of this, because some of the problems that, Rishi, that Liz Truss is talking about about. He is certainly facing, too, the ECHR is one of the main reasons why his Rwanda legislation isn't yet off the ground. Will he respond? Will he hit back? Or will he actually agree with some of what she says? Yeah, and, and whether or not he, he sees what she's saying as undermining him. I mean, he laughed, didn't he, when she was talking at the CPAC convention in the United States about Britain being part of the deep state. I mean, she'd been prime minister uh, just over a year ago, um, and he was sort of uh, laughing that off. But interesting, you mentioned uh, Rwanda there. Suella Bravman also lining up to criticise the prime minister, saying that he lacks the political will to pull out of the ECHR. Um, how will he feel about that, do you think? I think Rishi Sunak is going to find that very difficult because there are now plenty of very senior Conservative politicians who are openly telling journalists that they would like to see Britain get out of the ECHR. I think that it is not impossible that Rishi Sunak actually puts getting out of the ECHR on the Conservative manifesto, depending on what happens with this Rwanda legislation. It's going through the final hurdles in the Commons this week. We are very much expecting it to pass. But after that, there will be legal challenges. And if Rishi Sunak fails in his mission to get flights off the ground by the spring because of any uh, legal challenges to that bill, then he might start moving towards the leaving the ECHR position. 50% of Conservative voters from the 2019 election would like to see Britain leave the ECHR. Right, Olivia, what is um, Liz Truss's game with all of this, with this book and this series of interviews that she's doing? Uh, does she intend to stand at the next election, for instance? Is she positioning herself for a comeback? 
Well, my instinct is that what she's probably positioning herself for is a sort of career overseas in the US, assuming that Donald Trump becomes president. I mean, that is a, a big assumption. But if Donald Trump does become president, then Liz Truss's sort of worldview, Liz Truss's uh, fear of the of the deep state, this idea that sort of technocrats are running the world and politicians need to take back control and take back uh, dis- take back take back decisions for their nation. Those ec- those ideas would all echo pretty well with a Donald Trump presidency. Back here in the UK, I would suggest at the moment, at least, there isn't much of an appetite for uh, a Liz Truss comeback. There will be lots of politicians who very much agree with what she has to say, that the kind of blob or the deep state, as she puts it, is running the country. But Liz Truss as a sort of foreman for those ideas would probably go down like a bit of a lead balloon in Parliament. OK, Olivia, thank you very much indeed, as I said. And just to reiterate, more from Liz Truss with Nigel Farage again tonight on his show, 7 p.m. here on GB News. We want to know what you think about yes. what Liz Truss is having to say, whether you agree, disagree, and how you see her future. 40, many days, 40? 44 days after she became Prime Minister, she resigned, 49 days in office. Do you hold her responsible for the collapse of the economy? Can you forgive her for the impact that had on mortgages? Would you welcome a comeback? Perhaps you would like to see her uh, lined up uh, as leader of the Conservatives after the next election. Who knows what might happen? I was listening to a radio phone-in and uh, a few people from her constituency, which I think was in Suffolk. North, South, North? I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Wherever it is. Mm. And uh, anyway, apparently they don't see a lot of her. They don't think that she represented the constituency very well, but she's been there for quite a long time, Mm. 10 years or so. I think. Uh, Let us know your views again on that.